London Super Sewer recently hit a major milestone with the completion of the tunnelling phase of the project. 25 kilometres of tunnel have been constructed deep beneath the Thames, moving us a giant step closer to a cleaner river for our great city. On previous episodes, we've shown you how the excavated material we dug to create the tunnel was transported by barge out of the capital. We often get asked, where does it go and what is it used for? Well, today we're going to find out. My name's John Sage and this is Tunnel Vision. As you probably know, the super sewer stretches right across London, from Acton in the west to Abbey Mills in the east, where it links with the Lee Tunnel. For almost four years, six tunnel boring machines have carefully burrowed their way through London's underbed of clay and chalk. We've shown you how almost all of this material has been transported away from our sites by water, removing the need for thousands of lorries on London's congested streets. To find out where it ends up, we've come to Raynham, to the east of the city, where land and water are using Tideway's excavated material to create new wetlands to attract wildlife to the Thames estuary. There have been other legacy benefits too from our project here at Raynham, in terms of the river economy and environmental research. Let's talk to the team at Land and Water to find out more. So Tom, tell us how Land and Water are using the Tideway material here at Raynham. We're using the material from Tideway uh, to restore this former dredging disposal facility into approximately a square kilometre of wetland habitat. We've used the chalk material to create the topography for the wetland habitat and the clay material to effectively act as a permeable blanket across the site. The result of this is that the site be able to harvest its own water, so the higher areas of site will feed down into the lower area of site, such as this lake behind us. Are there any other legacy benefits here at Raynham as a result of the Tideway project? Yes, so we've also used a proportion of the clay to create an outside laboratory on site. The Wetland Science Centre is a series of 16 lagoons in which we're going to undertake experiments. The Tideway project has allowed us to invest significantly in Cold Harbour Jetty. We've dredged Berth 3, which is on the inside of the jetty. We've also upgraded the lighting and the mooring facilities on site. We're looking to furthering that, so to enable us to accommodate short sea shipping and using the gantry cranes, which are already existing in the site, to create a marine logistics hub, which will serve the Thames but also hopefully serve other parts of the UK. Parts of the Thames estuary are already a haven for wildlife. The wetlands being created at Raynham are using more than one million tonnes of material that we've brought here from the east and west sections of the tunnel. They're creating new habitats that are already attracting new species. Let's talk to one of the people behind this strategy and one of the contract partners who's delivered it. So James, you've overseen Tideway's river transport strategy. Tell us about the strategy and how this project fits in. So the basis for the strategy was to sort of alleviate the problem that we were potentially going to have of how we were going to get nearly sort of four to four and a half million tonnes worth of excavated material out of London. So the, the use of the river uh, minimises the impact on residents surrounding the sites themselves. Once the contractors came on board, we enhanced that even more by challenging them to take even more by river. Tell us about how you met that challenge, Matt. Well, right from the mobilisation of sites, we've been working on our wharfs at our river sites to be able to develop the capability to remove this material and bring in materials by river. That's been ongoing and we've been working with our waste contractors and sourcing sites like this to be able to ensure the waste is beneficially reused wherever possible. Tideway challenged us to see what more we could do in terms of the beneficial reuse and, and sustainable transport of the material. Um, and we saw a good success at our Greenwich Pump Station site, as James said, uh, where we've overachieved on our targets around moving spoil from the tunnel to sites like this where we can see biodiversity benefits. And James, you can see now, after the many years you've been overseeing the river transport strategy, the use of, of the excavated material now creating these new wetlands at Raynham. How does it feel? You can't be anything but proud, can you? You know, we had a vision very back at the, the very start of the project about what we hope would happen through the use of sustainable transport and hopefully ending up in an area that could create new habitat. And sites like this are sort of superb because we've now transported 1.4 million tonnes into here, which has allowed the creation of the habitat rather than going to a site just to fill a hole. Thank you guys, excellent. The lakes and wetlands created using Tideway's excavated material are already attracting new species to this part of the estuary, including wading birds, 
creating a biodiversity legacy for the project. Ultimately, this wetland will extend the existing nature reserve run by the RSPB. So we caught up with Alan Johnson from the organisation to find out what sort of wildlife legacy we're creating here. So Alan, tell us what sort of species are being attracted here already to the new wetlands at Rainham. Well, the site has already got a few species like lapwing, red shank, little ring plover. They're the kind of species you'd expect to find on a slightly disturbed site with a little bit of water in it. And what sort of wildlife legacy ultimately will this project deliver for the Raynham area? It could be quite exciting. So Raynham itself, which is just over there, is, has got one of the highest densities of breeding waders in the UK. So it's really, really important. It's an like island of biodiversity in a fairly built up area. And this is a kind of a missing piece of the jigsaw. Uh, so when this is finished and restored, all the species that are on either side already in these kind of managed wetlands can start to occupy this site and, and extend those populations and make them much more sustainable for the long term. Tideway is creating an environmental legacy here at Raynham for birds and other wildlife, which is good news for them and for anyone who appreciates the natural environment. And this will be mirrored in London when the super sewer is operational cleaning up the river for future generations of Londoners and our feathered friends to enjoy. On top of this, the new research centre will help experts learn more about the role nature and wetlands can play in habitat recovery and absorbing nutrients and carbon. Walking around these wetlands in Raynham is a world away from the busy central London construction sites of the Tideway project, but as we build the super sewer largely unseen beneath the city, this restoration project brings to life how engineering can play its part in enhancing the natural world around us. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join us next time on Tunnel Vision.